If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more crafts that are spooky! Can y'all tell that I was the uh, technician back of house kind of theater kid, not the actor kind of theater kid? <laughs>Welcome back. Welcome to the Boo Shed. As you can see, it's quite a bit different than it was last time. I have moved in. I have organized some things. Um, it is still a crazy mess in here. I am trying to work through what goes where, how, when, why, all that stuff. Um, but in my experience, the best way to do that is to actually do a project see where those problems arise and then fix them. So we're going to do a project. So I actually had an idea a while back where I wanted to do some applique, uh, like details in the boo shed, make it just like, not just spooky, but spooky to like a lot. So uh, we're going to do some applique that I got on Amazon. So I've got a couple little things here. I got this. <laughs> it's a literal bag of teeny skulls. <laughs> Halloweencostumes.com. If you're hurting for some Halloween in July, this is where you go to, to solve it. But yeah, so I got 20, like four of these and they were very inexpensive. So we're gonna be using maybe one of these cause these are a little bit bigger than I anticipated. I also got, oh, let me open it. What could it be? Could it be more fair? Uh, something else I got is some disgusting bugs. Yeah, <laughs> so I just got a bag of little fake bugs. I think just gluing some of these down and then um, uh, we'll definitely make them spooky and creepy. All right, and then lastly, we got me a little friend here. He's a little ugly bat that I saw on Amazon and he's, look at his little face. <laughs> so we got those three spooky elements to add to our project, the plan. Uh, step one, we are going to glue the spooky elements onto the wood applique. Let that dry. Step two, we'll be spray painting these down to gray, I think. Uh, just 100% coverage. And I think by doing that, it will sort of help meld the two pieces together, make them look more like they were born. They were made that way. Born that way? And then step three will be to go back in and paint in some details and then obviously add like some gold, you know, to make it more fancy. That is the plan. I've been calling these things applique. Uh, when I was researching, I called them applique. Google results uh, returning applique. I know that's kind of a sewing thing. So if that's not what I'm doing, please in the comments, let me know because I want to call them by their right name. But for the rest of this video, I will be calling them applique. And if that drives you crazy, I am very sorry. <laughs> Education though, I'm open to it. Okay, so let's get started and I hope I didn't just break that. Ooh. So for the big guys, we're gonna do the big, we're gonna bring out the big guns, which is the E6000. Because, oh boy, try to use it on something and then try to get that something off of the other thing. Good luck. going to do is try to put a bunch on just this edge because unfortunately because we're cutting the skulls in half that is the most we will have contact wise Ooh, yeah i'm thinking centipede for him maybe like a do that
so hot outside that my phone overheated. So I had to stop and let this thing cool down. <laughs> so I'm just in here enjoying some water and my air conditioner. <sighs> Ow. using cardboard. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. So uh, I let all of the applique dry overnight. So that means that it should be 100% um, cured with the glue and also that the spray paint should be completely 100% dried through. Our next step is going to kind of go back in and add some dimension. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take this black acrylic paint and we're going to water it down a little bit and let it kind of seep into the cracks, kind of creating a um, a more dark and more dimension. All right, and then we need to add some highlights since we're going back in with the low lights. It's this ah, paint just to kind of hit a couple of areas to kind of create that sort of antique feel. Um, and I went with sort of like the gray and the gold because my wallpaper has a lot of gray and gold in it. And I thought that would look pretty cool, kind of tie the room together and make it more interesting looking. So let's get started. And so as you can see, I'm sort of just going in and very, very quickly, just sort of adding some black, you know, where like some under parts of the things are just to add in definition, just because we took it all down to gray, you know, it needs to visually, to be visually interesting, there needs to be contrast. Now that I'm getting to these bigger ones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on the material with the paintbrush like we've been doing, but then I'm going to come back with this paper towel and I'm going to dab off the material so that it creates interesting shapes and it also sort of removes some of the material and it means that it'll go by faster and not have to take as much time meticulously applying black and making it look very antique. So this is a really easy way to cut out a whole bunch of time. All right, so let's, uh, let's do it. looks really stinking cool. Look at him. Oh, I love him so much. How cute is he? As you can see by dabbing it, it made it look really dimensional and there's a lot of interesting contrast in there without, you know, spending a whole bunch of time doing it. Now that I've got my low light on every single piece, we're going to go back in and we're going to do a highlight with this gold wax paint. So all I'm going to do is just take my finger. So take it like that. Dab, dab, dab. So it gets more coverage on my finger. And then with my finger, I'm just going to very gently go across the ridges and that'll create a nice, pretty, like streak of highlight. So it's even more visually interesting and also a little more antique and also more spooky haunted mansion, less pirate, which is always the balance with spooky is it's across right into pirate if you're not careful. Basically, we want just the most pointy part of his little sculpture to pick up the paint very gently.
All right, now that we have all of these low lighted and highlighted and dried, we are going to put them up on the walls. All right, so we're gonna use these little brads. Uh, let's try it. <laughs> Did it? Uh, all of them are up. All of them are painted. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. There's always a point, and it seems like almost every craft, where I get to a moment when it's like, what am I doing? This looks stupid. I should stop. This is such a waste of my time and money. <laughs> and it was about the point where I started gluing stuff on to the wood, and I was just looking at these like crappy looking bugs, just haphazardly glued to wood applique <laughs> and I almost was just like okay I'm gonna call it and thank goodness I kept going because I am just delighted <laughs> with the way these came out oh my gosh I literally cannot stop looking at them they are so cool and cute and I can't believe I made them and uh, I think they add so much like fun detail to the space. I mean, look how cool is that? You know, I mean, this curtain that I sort of haphazardly put together for this window, and that looks so much cooler with that thing on top. Oh, I love it. I love it. I just love, I love spending my days making Halloween decorations for no reason other than they just make me happy. So we got that done. So the big question though is what do I do with 22 more skulls. <laughs> May have gone a little overboard for this project, but uh, yeah, I'll have to be looking out for projects for my 22 other little friends here. Mm -hmm. Now that this is done, I'm going to probably call it and um, I will see you guys around. <laughs> Thank you.